I think Fedor had a couple of warm-up fights, and I think that Fedor is probably back to his old self. Uh, I think um, the volume of punches he throws, I think the cardio he shows, I think the, uh, the, uh, the pressure he puts on constantly during the fight, I don't think he'll ever leave him. So I think he's just as dangerous as he's ever been. He just had not to bring off off. What did you make of that Maldonado fight, though? Because uh, there were times where he looked like he was in some serious trouble. Yeah, but I think any time, uh, he probably took BJ uh, or Fabio uh, rather lightly. And, uh, and, and paid for it. I think that, that's the thing with our sport is that uh, anytime you, you take somebody lightly and you, and you, and you for a moment and you get caught. I took Ben Rothwell lightly. The guy felt like I was walking him pretty, pretty handily and I was like, I'll take him down and beat him in his own game. I got choked. Um, so I think it can keep you honest very quickly and I think that's what happened. How much had he been on your radar as somebody that you wanted to face, somebody that you thought in your career you would have the opportunity to face? That was one of my initial requests when I came over. I was like, look, if there's ever a chance if Fedor ever gets back into fighting, I want to be his first fight. So that was, it was something I, I, I openly petitioned for. How much have you had to sort of change your training or have you done anything different to prepare for him? I haven't changed anything. Uh, well, I guess in theory, I started boxing with uh, Big Baby Miller down down in Florida with, with Coach Henry, uh, and we've had a couple really good training partners. It's it's it, Fedor is not necessarily known for throwing anything straight straight on the pipe. He's got a lot of looping punches, jumping into his hooks, a lot of uh, a lot of very aggressive power and punches and bunches, which Big Baby Miller is really good at as far as punches and bunches. But he throws a lot more straights and a lot more power and everything. So I've, I've kind of found myself bouncing back and forth between Indianapolis with my training partners, Team Two Turn there, and, uh, and Big Baby Miller, and Coach Greg Jones down in Florida. Uh, and, and it's worked out really well. I feel that I've gotten a, a great amount of, of Greco work, double under, double over, over under work, uh, a, lot, a lot of body throws, a lot of getting up from bottom, a lot of transitions, uh, and, and really in a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, joint defense, like whether it's on bars or, or Americanas, key locks, uh, any kind of like, uh, joint lock submissions. You worried at all about any Russian hacking of your kid? <laughs> well, we got, they got Trump in, so you know, if we get Trump in, I think anything can happen in the world now. Matt, how do you, how do you approach uh, fighting someone like Fedor? The guy's obviously a legend, he's done it all in the sport. Just from a mental perspective, how, how do you approach that? Well, you know, I, I, I have a, a, a rather large ego as well. So, like, <laughs> I think that, I don't necessarily think I'm a legend, but I think that I, I have potential to become somebody that can be uh, mentioned in, in, in a sentence someday along the line. And, uh, and I think this is just, it's a legacy fight. Like, obviously, Fedor has a lot to lose in this fight. Uh, I have a lot to gain with this fight. And I'm going to do my damnedest to steal his legacy and steal uh, all his fans. And I want everybody in the world to be like, wow, like, Fedor looked damn good, but old mate Trump with that ass. You know, is that that's why you, is that why you wanted that fight? Is that why you asked for it? Um, yeah, but, uh, yeah, yeah. With lack of a lot of words, yes. <laughs> hey, Matt, uh, that might have been the motivation which you listed there. If not, is there any other motivations for you personally coming into this country? I mean, really, it's Fedor's the GOAT. He's the, he, he's, he's the biggest name in my sports history as far as I'm concerned. And anybody who's a competitor wants that opportunity. You know, like, I, 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 if, if I was playing back in the day, I would have wanted to play against Barry Sanders. And I would have wanted to, uh, to, to or Walter Payton. I would have wanted to do the best to play against uh, Leon Lett. You know, uh, uh, one of the best old linemen ever. Like, I, I would have wanted that situation and an opportunity. So it's just, you know, I'm fortunate enough that I came here at the right time and I had a name that was sexy enough for Fedor to be like, yeah, sure, I'll do it. Let's do it. I mean, I think we all know that Fedor wouldn't have come out to fight yeah, nobody. So uh, I'm happy that at least I, I have that much in my life to, to warrant an opportunity. What would you say to those that, that you mentioned right now, you feel that he's the greatest of all time. There's many that don't feel that way. Do you have a response to those people that mention that it, you don't feel that he's the greatest of all time? Well, everybody's wrong. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> but what's your opinion? What, what puts you him over everybody else? Uh, the fact that he fought the best in the world at their primes, uh, had, had, had an unbeaten record, uh, won via arm bars, via knockouts, via TKOs, via uh, arm locks. I mean, anything that he could do, chokes. I mean, Fedor is, is the best. He's, he's, he's the best all around. Uh, I mean, to show you, like, for example, like, I've never heard another person make a comment uh, as such when he was fighting Andre Arlovsky. And Andre was getting his ass. He was whooping him pretty well. Um, and, uh, and pushing him back, which Fedor is not usually going backwards. And Fedor made the comment that he realized that something different was going to happen because Andre's football changed. So, just everything else aside, just from that, to have the presence of mind to be getting your ass whipped in the middle of a fight and to realize that something sh is shifting because of his footwork in the middle of an ass whooping is really impressive. 
this. Add into that the fact that as soon as something did change, when Andre tried that flying knee, he threw the exact right, the exact, the, the exact thing that he should have thrown and starts him in midair. Like, so you, you, you see it, you acknowledge it, you realize what's going on, as soon as it happens, you react immediately, and then correctly, you're, you're a fucking goat. Man. That's, nobody else does it. I've never heard anybody else say anything like that. That's the goat. And, and uh, follow up to that, uh, a lot of people feel that you shouldn't be fighting anymore. Regardless, you're taking this fight because of what it can do for you. Uh, it's a big name on your resume to build up your legacy. Do you feel that he should stop fighting given the performances that he's had in his last fight? say that like uh, you know like Fedor is Fedor is Fedor Fedor can do whatever Fedor wants um, do I think I'm going to win yeah absolutely do I think I'm a dangerous fight for Fedor absolutely uh, do I think that be, I, th I think at this point beating Fedor or be Fedor beating me I think kind of revalidates him I think I'm pretty damn solid uh, and, and especially with with um, with the work I've been able to get in with my coaches with my training with my training team I think I'm pretty damn good. And I always say, man, I can beat anybody in the world on any given day. Uh, I can be one of the best in the world, uh, if not the best. So, you know, for, for Fedor to come in and try it out, that shows that he's a lifelong competitor and that uh, that, he, that he's, he's never satisfied. He wants some more. So who, who am I to say he's going to be should quit? On top of that, too, you know, what do you make of the criticisms of his past competition? Many bring that up that he, this, the last guys he's fought at his weight class at heavyweight haven't been the elite. What do you make of all that criticism and do you agree with him? No, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I feel like a, like a, a real dark cloud like blindness over you right now. Like, oh, I'm just asking more. Right, yeah. Like, I don't know, man. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't put time into that. I don't have an opinion on it. Like, uh, if people want to say, the only person I've ever heard say that is, is Cheo, and he's just tongue in cheek, just dicking around with people. So, like, I, I, don't, I don't care. I, I wasn't involved in a pride era. I'm involved in my era. I'm drug free. I'm sure Fayette was drug free. So, the fact that his. His people that were, comp, were comp, the people he beat, maybe he was on steroids, maybe they were on steroids, maybe they weren't, maybe they were the best or not the best, past the prime. I don't, I don't care. I, I care. February 18th, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to punch Fedor <coughs> in his face. And Fedor's going to punch me in my face. Um, and hopefully I can avoid more than, than, uh, than I give. That's all I can give you. Hey, uh, Dan, full contact fighter. I was wondering, I mean, Fedor is Fedor because of his power, because he's not just a great solo champion, because he's got that overhand right. Can you really prepare for that in your camp? Absolutely. Yes, I can. I can. I can. Yes, I can prepare for that for certain. The thing that you, that is the challenge is um, he, he jumps into everything. He's got a tremendous amount of, of go. So uh, he closes distance very quickly. His, uh, he jumps into his left hook and turns that into a uh, double under body lock uh, and, is, and is very good at getting people to the ground off that double body lock, whether it's a, a pullback. His right hand turns into a shot, next thing you know. Kind of like Mayweather. Yeah, so, so if, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you play passive, waiting for that, that, the, the overhand right, then all of a sudden he's on your legs. If you play passive on the, on the, on the double, on, on the left hook where he jumps into, it and just try to play up here, then I'll talk to you on your body lock. You play the body lock and you land on the hook. So it's he's 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 great at what he does and he always has been. That's why he's paid for it. Um, but honestly like like I hear he's I hear he's strong, I hear he's powerful, but uh, you know so am I and, 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 and I throw straight down the pipe. So if anything can come looping around, I'm sure they know that I'm gonna be throwing straight down the pipe as right a counter. And, uh, and Henry Hoops, the best striking coach in the country, and, uh, and or in the world, and I feel that uh, we're prepared for that. You move on with everything in the gym. Yep, I'm, I'm, I'm a Henry guy, man. That's uh, Henry's my striking coach. Coach Greg's my wrestling coach. Uh, Chris Idol's my mentor. So I, I do a, a lot of traveling back and forth and get as much as I can between the, between the three of those. But my, my team, Team Two Ton, which is uh, Charles Stanback and, and uh, Ed Jones, I call him Butter. Um, there's there's nobody in the world I've ever met that has refrigerator strength like that. So refrigerator strength, you can pick up a refrigerator and create a block. You know, like so. The, and and they're, they're strong. Charles is a very strong Greco guy. So. As soon as they get their hands on me, uh, I know I'm in trouble and there's a five-point throw coming. So uh, I've been prepared for it. I got Coach Tom Erickson, Big Cat, uh, who always advises me and helps me out along the way. So I feel like the team I put together uh, has, has kind of prepared me for this moment. And I, I've had a history of, of not succeeding at my, my, my biggest opportunities, and I plan on changing that. What, what would a, mean, a win over Fedor mean to you? It means I get paid. <laughs> How many fights did you sign for with Belgium? Um, four, four or five deal. Yeah. And so the question would be though, after Fedor, would everybody else be something of a letdown fight? Or would you just at that point feel like the title fight would be the next best thing? Well, I mean, really, uh, I, I'm, I don't think there's such a thing as a letdown fight. Fedor's a huge fight, right? But I, I think that 
it, once you have that perspective, or you allow yourself to have that perspective of a letdown fight, that's when you get seriously hurt for the rest of your life. Uh, and, and that can easily happen. For example, uh, look at Karatanov, right? Karatanov, I'm assuming, did not take uh, Javi uh, 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 did very seriously, right? Came in there, wasn't, wasn't until looped up. Maybe it was the walkout because it takes such a long time for Bellator for the original walkout to show the stage and everything else. Maybe it was, um, and, and that happens. Uh, and that was a, a brutal knockout. So I think that um, if you allow yourself to have that mentality, that's when bad things happen. So I, I, don't, I don't think I'll ever run into that. Matt, between uh, this fight this weekend and your fight with Fedor, Bellator probably has the two biggest fights of, of the year, just the first two months. Mm -hmm. How do you see the progress going in Bellator, and do you like where it's going? You know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with, with what Bellator is doing, primarily because they're not just throwing money and chasing any free agent. I think they're being very selective about who they pick. Uh, I think they're, they're, they're paying attention to who has a fan base, a good following, who, has, who, who affects ratings, uh, what their placements have always been on cards, uh, and, and what they've been able to do. And uh, I think that they've made, I think they've made very, very intelligent choices. And I, I'm really happy with. Well, honestly, man, I'm really happy with the way that they treat us. Really, like it's, it's a totally different world. Like the, the just like not even the perks. It's just the conversation. Like you get to know everybody involved, and you're not just like if you have something to say. Like even if they're just patronizing. You'd be like, oh yeah, right on, man. That sounds great. But it was at least like an entertaining. You're like, oh right on. I guess we could do this and this, and, and it's and then they could go away and never think about it again. But at least at the moment, you don't feel like you're being demeaned and, and, and just like, yeah, right on, dude. Kind of the situation. What do you think it'll take for Bellator to make that that big leap to get on par? with the UFC. You know, man, I, 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 I don't, I don't know. Well, it's, it's the marketing machine, right? It's the PR, it's the money that's been put into the game, right? And the UFC was the groundbreaker, right? Well, next, next to Pride, but... Um, so it'll probably, probably take time. And uh, I think they're doing the right things. I think, I think uh, Mr. Coker's production is fantastic. Uh, I, I like the workouts, I like the scenery, I like the, the, the panache, the funk of it, you know? It's pretty dope. Um, and, uh, you know, like I said, it's probably just time, putting on good shows. I think that I think it, it really speaks really well for Bellator now that Benson came over, did, uh, you know, fought his ass off at 170 but didn't win that fight. Fought his ass off against 155 against Michael Chandler and didn't win that fight. I think that shows, like, hey, man, our, our top talent is just as good as anybody else's top talent. And I think that, you know, Phil, Phil Davis coming over and winning that, I think that it's, it's good. I think they're, they're kind of revamping everything we got to get done. But I think there'll be some hell fights. It's just time. Matt, you mentioned Andre Orlovsky, and especially with uh, Freddie Roach behind him. People don't realize, but he was an elite-level boxer in mm -hmm. MMA. Um, are you going to try to stay outside of the pocket with Fedor? Are you going to try to kind of stay away from his power? What's your strategy in the stand-up? Well, I don't go nipple to nipple with too many people. Really, I'm, not a, I'm not a wrestler. It's not my forte. Um, so, like, I, I'm, I'm long. I'm straight. Uh, I'm, I fight. I throw straight punches. Um, and then, uh, and... We know what you would say. Right on. I'm long. I, I throw straight punches. I, uh, uh, so, I, I keep my distance anyways. I feel like I'm the master of my... Of my of my area, my territory. So if Fader wants to come in that area, which he will have to touch me, he'll have to eat a couple. I mean, he may get may, he may get his hands on me, and he may get me to the ground, and may may throw his punches and bunches on me. But uh, there'll be some counters left in there. Is that the most dangerous thing? I talked to Bass Rutten once about uh, you know fighting him and what he would be most scared of. And he said being on bottom and the ground and pound, and having Fedor raining down on you. Fedor's ground and pound is is, is, is legendary, uh, and he's. He's to the point where he has such good body control that he's reckless with it, uh, which I think is what Dan Henderson was able to have last time, uh, where he didn't feel like he had to control it because his hips are so heavy, and Dan just kind of knee bumped him over with a little bit of an underhook and came up and threw yeah, it under that arm. Yeah. Punch, yeah. Um, and, and so I think that I think that really I think that Fedor is so good at what he does. He has so much power and he's so comfortable throwing it uh, that being on, on, on underneath him is not where I want to be. Matt, is he the greatest of all time? In my opinion. What's your favorite favorite fight? You know, man, that's really that's that's difficult. Um, you know, you could say that you could say the Crow Cops, right? Uh, you could say even Kevin Randleman, because I mean that when he got dumped on his head to keep the his composure to roll back under and to, to, to gain top position eventually and to catch that guy down the corner. I mean, that was madness. I think it was about to come out. Whatever it was. I mean, it was amazing. You know? um, just like situations. He's put, he's been in, I even, I mean, hell, like uh, the Nogueira fight. 
I mean, he just, he just finds a way to win all the time. He, I mean, he's so stoic. He keeps his, he keeps his, his, his head about him at all times. He doesn't ever, you don't ever see him lose his cool and get flustered and do something stupid. That's, that's amazing. Randall Man actually claimed that he knocked him out with that slam and then woke him back, up, back and up and hit him. I, I would believe it. I mean, really, I, I saw I saw shades of, of, of that that slam and, and his composure and Benson when Benson got dumped in his head by Matt Chandler and then sat up for a second and then rolled back under for a single. It's a scary looking slam. Oh, for sure. Yeah. For sure. And it's just, it shows how much you got. Can you talk a little bit about the state of the uh, heavyweight division right now? Obviously, a lot of American bigger athletes are tend to go to baseball, and, uh, uh, football, and basketball, and all that as well. What do you think it's going to take to motivate some, maybe some more American heavyweights to get in and um, the international uh, scene? I mean, how is that? How is that, that impacting one of the heavyweights? Because we're seeing a lot more heavy, uh, older heavyweights, not as many younger ones. Um, well, I think a money, money has to change, right? To get somebody to actually consider doing MMA versus uh, football or hockey or whatever, money's got to change. Um, so I think that's a, I think that's a primary concern. Um, I think the second is is ego. I think a, a lot of dudes that I know that play pro ball or or, or even wrestlers uh, can't handle getting their ass beat in front of five million people plus mom, grandma, dad, uncles, you know, your friends on your block come home and be like, dude, you got fucked up, you know, like, like and you got all lumped up and you got an eye with a, a testicle on it. I mean, it's just a, a rough life. Uh, so if, if a lot of people, if, I don't think a lot of people's egos can handle that. And I think that's probably one of the biggest things. So it's more of like a, a self-check and a gut check um, that if you can handle that, handle getting your ass because eventually it's going to happen, right? I mean, you're going to get smoked badly in front of, in front of the world. Uh, and it's going to be on the da 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 you know. Um, so it, it, it's, I think if they can handle that. So I think it's money, and I think it's a, a self-check with you. Um, are, are you thinking about maybe um, going over to Ryzen maybe and, 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 doing, and participating there? I know King Mo has been over there, and there's plenty of heavyweights over there. As the thing. I, get, I get paid by Bellator, so I'm happy with Bellator. If we have a conversation that says, hey, there's, we're cool with this and there's equal money over here or greater money over there, well, then I'll have a conversation. And then um, Chael had mentioned the fact that you basically signed a blank contract for, for Fedor. And, you know, did you have any inklings that it was going to be Fedor once you... I thought it was going to be Rampage. I thought it was going to be Rampage. And I, and I, well, originally, I was like, well, it, it's going to be... Because I heard that they were having a really difficult time signing Fedor. So I thought it was going to be uh, Rampage uh, or um, maybe maybe even Crow Cop. Uh, or Karatanov. And Karatanov lost, so I kind of wiped him out of the picture. And then uh, I was quite certain it was going to be Rampage. And it was like, here, it's, or you cool signing this out without, without a name on it, without, without seeing the monies. And I said, uh, and I was like, well, I was like, is it, is it, this, is it this month? There were two weeks left in a month. Is it, is it this month? And they said, no, it's not. I said, okay. I was like, well, is it, is the fight worth my time? I said, I promise you it's worth your time. Sure, what the hell? I mean, I'm here to compete, so let's get down. At what time, at what time, at what point did you know, know it was Fedor? Was it right when you walked out, or? But when I saw the glorious sweater babs. <laughs> <laughs> what do you tell Fedor if he's watching? I hope you have a great camp. Can't wait to punch you in your face. You, you stated your respect for Fedor already. It sounds like you're treating this as if it was, you know, him and his A-plus game, but have you looked at his last couple fights and seen any tendencies? Like, you know, it looks like he's kind of almost abandoned his grappling, you know, his biggest strengths in the Maldonado fight, he just struck the whole time. What have you seen that you can capitalize on with your game? Um, I have not watched any of his, I have not watched any of his fights recently at all because I kind of feel that those are, are, are misnomers. I think they're, they're one-offs, they were ring rust. So uh, I, I, I've seen Fedor for a long period of time. I know what Fedor does. Every, everybody knows what Fedor does. That's why Fedor is awesome. He does whatever he does, and everybody You're still falls victim. I am 100%. Uh, I mean, I, I'm obviously I'm still 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 preparing and practicing for Greco locks, back trips, uh, you know, uh, body weight drops, um, anything else. I'm expecting nasty ground and pound. I'm expecting. We're, we're starting in against the best grapplers I can find down in Florida, anywhere else. I'm starting in the deepest arm bars I can get. I'm starting in Kimura positions. I'm starting and any like anybody I grapple with. I'm like, look, end up in any kind of shoulder lock, any kind of arm bar. Uh, I'm, I'm looking for that. any kind of crafty setup that I don't see coming. I'm looking for it. That's when Federal pulls him off. So like whether it's belly up, belly down, like tripping around. I don't care if you do a cartwheel and end up in it. End up in it. So uh, I'm preparing for the worst. One question.